In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to begin to create a video intro that would be parallel to one that was used in the early 1970s in American television. One of my subscribers named Chris suggested I look at some of the intros to the series produced by Quinn Martin. And indeed they are interesting and I'd like to show you in this and a few subsequent tutorials some ways to emulate what has been done in the past. First of all, I'd like to show you a copy of the very first two seconds and then I have a copy where I, I slowed down the video so you can see a little bit what actually happened and then a very rough, totally unfinished version of something like it that I was able to create with PowerDirector. It's a very interesting procedure and when you realize it only is on the screen for a couple of seconds, it's a lot of work for a little bit of time, but it's fun to do. So let me show you the examples for a few seconds and then we'll get into the training. Now that you've seen them, let's begin. One thing that I want to do is use a lot of tracks. So you can right click anywhere in the timeline area and click on Add Tracks. And I'm not going to add any audio, but I added some video. So I would take my audio and zero it out and then add any video tracks I want below any of the tracks I have. I already have 13 of them here. I have more than enough, but we'll add a few more just for fun to show you how easy it is to do that. I'll add nine more and click on OK. Now I have tons of tracks to use. Normally, if I were doing the entire project, I would use at least five tracks, five for particular forms of titles, and five for the color boards that disclose the titles. But we'll only do part of the project in this exercise. The other thing I want to do is describe the track. So I'm going to take my arrow and drag to the right and you notice here I have some titles for my tracks. Now I've already put in some I want to use. I renamed track number two as the, three as streets, and four, uh, let's call that of. So I have the streets of for the streets of San Francisco. And then on the following tracks, I'm going to use color boards. This will be behind the word the, and I'll put a C for color board. And then on track number six, we'll do streets, C, and then of. I find when a project gets complicated, it's nice to know the label. Now, if I wanted one for San Francisco, uh, or other things that we would have here, I could add more and more, but we're just going to do those first three in this exercise. So my color boards will now go on track five, six, and seven. So let's uh, put them in and begin to manipulate them. So I go to my media content, my media room, click on the down arrow and choose color boards. I'm going to take the total white one, drag down to the bottom, Drag that down to the with the C and put that on track number five. I'm going to click on my clock in PowerDirector 365 or 17, change the duration, change the number of seconds to one, and the duration at 30 frames per second, I'll do 15, press enter. And then we'll elongate this a little bit more. We'll stretch out our timeline so we can see more precisely. Next thing I want to do is do some editing. I can press the F2 key on the keyboard or I can double click to get into my PIP designer. First thing I want to do is I want to change the size of it. So I'm going to turn off maintain aspect ratio on the left side and then we will narrow this and make it smaller as well. Now I want this to be the size of the shortest letter which is which is of. And then I'm going to rotate it. I'll take the uh, cursor and click on the green arrow and tilt it back a little bit. Now when we do this, if you look very carefully, rotation will be marked here. It's a minus 9.7. I'm going to type in a number that I can remember. I'll do a minus 13 
and that will be my angle. Now I have to remember that because if anything is skewed, I can I can immediately set it to a minus 13. The text will have to be skewed to the same amount, so it's good to remember that number. So now I have my first, now I'm going to have to do a lot with it, but at least it's on the screen. So I'll click on that and do control C to copy. And click on track six and I'll, I'll do paste. I need to move it back to the beginning because my playhead was not at the beginning. And then we'll go down to the following track and seven, control V again and we'll paste it in. Now I have three that are on top of each other. I find that it's helpful when you're moving one, them around to lock down the tracks you don't want to move. And then I'm just going to drag. And there's one. That's my third one. I should go down farther. And then I'll lock that. Unlock the middle one, which happens to be sitting right now again on top of the first one and drag that down. And then what I recommend when you're moving around the screen is to take your keyboard with the up, down, left, and right arrow and align these precisely any way you want using that technique. So I'm going to keep unlock all three of them now that they're not on top of each other. And I'll take the third one and we'll move it up a little bit and so they're roughly aligned. Now the next job is to make them come on the screen. And for this I wish I had a numbering grid that went way off the screen so I could be absolutely precise. We'll have to be good enough, especially since it's only a two second effect. So what I'm going to do is take the first one and we'll do some keyframing with that. This is where I want it to be, let's say in approximately six uh, frames. So I'm going to click on my PIP Designer and I'll move in six frames and click a position and a scale value. We'll be using that later. Then I'll move to the very first frame and if I drag it, it will move it in a position off the screen. I'm trying to be approximately parallel to where it comes in. Click on OK. And now when we play our clip for the first six frames, that pops in. So I need to repeat the process with the second one. I'll get into my PIP Designer. I'll move my playhead in six frames, do a position and scale, and then go back to the beginning. And then we'll move this one off the screen approximately parallel and that sets a position value there as well, and that's OK. And I'll repeat that with the third, but won't record it. So now when we play this, we notice that we have all three coming in approximately at the same time, and they're the same size, and then they freeze on the screen. Now you can manipulate the actual position values to make it perfect. We won't do that in this case. The next thing I want to do is I want to make each one of them the length of the word, that they will represent. The first one will be the, and the second will be streets, and the third will be of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one, let's click on the track number five. I move to my position value. I'm going to get set a keyframe for this one at 12 frames. And now I'm going to change the scale at frame 12. So we'll slightly enlarge it for the word the and it set a position value and a scale value. Click on OK. The second one is the word streets. That's the longer one. I'll get into the PIP designer on that one. Move to the sixth frame and go to 12. And now I'm going to change the scale of this much longer. Click on OK. The word of, we don't have to change. So now what we have when we watch our clip is we'll have all three come in and they're the appropriate length for the word that they represent. Now in the next tutorial, we'll show you how to move them even farther to the right and then make them disappear. 
as they disclose the text below them called The Streets Of, which is the first part of our exercise in mimicking what we saw in the 1972 production.